Hello from My Gambia. Today in our story, we bring you Continent Clothing. Continent Clothing brings you the very best in street style and festival wear, created using geometric and vibrant traditional African wax prints. All their clothing are made and designed in the Gambia, and they work directly with Gambian tailors. Their aim is to provide full-time and sustainable employment for as many as possible across West Africa. They do not only make clothing, but bags, jewelry, and many other accessories. You can order from their online shop in almost every part of the world. We met the founder of Continent Clothing and had a short interview with him, after which we went around to see the process of making their products and we met some of their tailors and workers. Hello from my Gambia. Here we are in Sukuta with Mr. Lucas Baron Townsend, the founder and lead designer of Continent Clothing. So can you give us a tip about how your brand is different from other brands? Uh, I think the main thing that makes us different is that we're more than a, we're more than just a clothing brand. So at every step of the way we try and support the local community. So we do that with um, development programs for our tailors, we teach them new skills, we support them through their um, their journey to financial independence and i think that's the most important thing for us to... so you could have used any other country but you chose gambia instead why was that well i've been coming here since i was about 14 because my parents bought a, a piece of land out here and so i've been coming on holiday since i was a kid and i just fell in love with the place i mean it, it shaped my whole life so if i'm coming to gambia I decided to go to university and study African development and economics. I know nothing to do with fashion designing, but the whole the whole point is that I wanted I wanted to do something out here, and I knew that straight away just because the people and the culture out here just resonate with me so much. So much. Then, how did this idea start? The idea for continent clothing started because when I was coming out here, I used to go to Senegambia Craft Market. That I'm sure you've been to. And I used to buy these cool, colourful trousers and they were ridiculously comfy. I used to take them back to university and everybody was like, wow, like, where do I get these from? And so what happened is that every single time I came back out, I would have orders with my, with my friends and they were like, oh, well, well can you, I, I want uh, two trousers and two tops or whatever. And so in the, end, in the end, it just became a natural fit for what I wanted to do because I love colourful clothing, I love African development, I study African development and, they, and I just kind of merged the two and realised that well, I could actually start a business that is socially responsible, provide many, many people employment and employment for a long period of time and I get to go to festivals and wear colourful clothing, so uh, what, what's, what, what's not to like? <laughs> yes, yeah. that is amazing. And how does your brand contribute to local Gambian business? So firstly, we, we only work with local Gambia businesses. So we only work with uh, fabric merchants that are from Gambia. And so we make sure that the money is going back into the community. And then when you take the steps to the tailors, I mean, we work currently, I think it's nine tailoring shops, which is over 45 tailors that work in those shops. And they get paid per item, but they get paid a very good rate per item. And all, all of them are earning more than three times the average wage in Gambia. Did, did you import designers to come or who is it responsible for the designs? To be honest, like, so me, myself and my mum are the designers, but we're, we're not designer trained. We, we, we decide that we see something cool on the street that we like, like a bomber jacket, and we're like, wow, that would look amazing in African print. So what we do is we, we basically just do a lot of sampling with the tailors. So like, I'm like, all right, let's try this out, let's try that out. And then over the course of maybe three or four samples, we normally get it right. And so we're not, I, I don't think, uh, I'm not classically trained as a designer, but what I do have is a very good eye for detail. I know what will look good in what design. I know what, I know what people will like back in, uh, back in the rest of the world. And it just seems to work. Hmm. And was it difficult for Gambian local tailors to adapt to showing different design, different from the traditional African uh, Gambian clothes they are used to showing all the time? Oh, it was a bloody nightmare. <laughs> 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 like, not, like, not the, when I first started, like, you know, I, I walk into a tailoring shop and I was like, I want 50 of the, exactly the same design. And they're just like, ah, they've, got, they've got, literally got no, no idea. 
And then after the first few, so I used to get mistakes all the time. It's like a pocket in the wrong place or a pocket turned backwards. But then this is this is what Continental Class Clothing also brings to the local communities. They get better. So since since we've been since we ironed out these mistakes, it's like over the long course of a period of time, we give them training, we make, teach them and how to do certain things and what not to do, and that we need it to be better quality. So we need a double seam rather than a single seam. All things that they've never done before, and so it's a transferring of skills about how they can they, how they can get better. And it's just the, and now we rarely get mistakes. Yeah. That's nice. Mm. So we can probably say that okay, Gambia is the place where all the uh, clothes are made and then mm. exported. Or do you have a shop in the Gambia where you also sell the clothes? No, I don't have a shop in Gambia because when I it's something that people have asked me about a lot, and I do think the Gambians should be able to wear the clothing. I'm like, but, but the whole point behind what I'm supposed to be doing is that I'm bringing money into the country. And so what I never didn't want to do was sell, sell to Gambians and then the money go elsewhere. Like the whole point is that the production is all done in Gambia and the money the money is then filtered into the economy through the various tailors that we have. And uh, but yeah, so as of yet, people they can buy online, but uh, there's no shopping in Gambia. Okay. And how do you uh, choose the fabrics? Where do you buy them? Is it in the Gambia or from us? So most of the fabric shopping is done in Gambia. And so obviously we go to Serkunda and we go to Banjul. In but the fabrics are from all over Africa. But the main the main thing is I, I I when I am when I am in Gambia, I go and do all the shopping with Adana, my Gambian my Gambian manager. But it's the best part of the job because it's you know like the amount of fabrics you can choose in just one shop is just mind boggling. Yeah. Okay. And how do you ensure the quality of the fabrics you choose? That comes with um, comes with experience. So when we first started, like like everything, I mean we were choosing from rubbish. So, the, the, we always went for really colourful and amazing fabrics, don't get me wrong. But there are there's several different kinds of quality that you can get. And we used to just get the colourful one, we didn't even consider how it felt against the skin, how it would look in a certain style. We just started off with just getting a colourful fabric. But now, the, all the fabrics we get are top quality you can possibly buy. And it's just, it just, it just comes with time. Like, when you start something, it's always never as good, but it should, it should get better and better and better. Yeah. Where can people get your clothing and who are many your customers? <laughs> so you can buy the clothing online and our customers are all over the world. So Gambian products can be seen everywhere. I've got a regular customer in French Polynesia, even got past customers in Papua New Guinea, got a regular customer in China. So Gambian products have really gone very globally. Wow. That will involve exporting and it could be difficult in Gambia. How do you sort out those difficulties? Uh, again, it's just experience. I remember the first time I had Redcoat is a local delivery service that takes stuff to the UK. And the first time I turned up, I was so nervous. I walked into this building with you know, guys are Gambian guys. I'm a tube, I have a place of African clothing and uh, like no idea what price I'm gonna pay. But you know, it's just these things just take time. If you if you actually just try and do things, things happen. Mm -hmm. And you just learn the processes. Yeah. But these clothes would need models to wear and yeah. Do the photographs. Do you work with Gambian models? Yes, yeah, so all of the models in, in Gambia are Gambian. I mean, I have all. I haven't. I don't. I don't know if any of my uh, models in the UK have been Gambian, but all of the models are out here. They're Gambian. But we try and do other things locally as well. So before, all of my photography was done in the UK, and the photographers in the UK are fantastic, and, and but it's because they've had that experience for years. But this time I came out. I really wanted to start working with some local Gambian talent. Because it's just, it, when I first started contemplating, that Gambian talent just wasn't there. It wasn't, it wasn't photographers, there wasn't um, web designers, that, that just didn't exist now. And now that seven years down the line, I've come back to live here and work here permanently. And now I can see that there is that talent. So I've started working with a couple of great Gambian photographers. One is Bits Photography, who's just, he captures the lives of the Gambian people within his photography. I mean, it's just made. <laughs> Okay, so in the next five years, where do you see this business going or where do you see this brand going? 
as soon as I see it going even more global. So now that we've got the systems in place in Gambia to take Gambia global, I want to continue the production in Gambia, but I want to have a place of distribution in the US because people in America love African styles and African fashions, but they just there are, there are locally there are a few people doing it, but they're all making it in the states. And what I would love to do is to really, really crack the American market. I mean, a, a lot of my customers are from America already, but I really want to take Gambia into America. What would your message be to the world? Keep it colorful. <laughs> <laughs> After the short interview, we went around with Lucas to meet some of their workers. We first met Jenaba, who is a new member of the Continent Clothing. She just opened a tailoring shop two months ago in her house. My name is Jenaba. Um, we have a tailoring shop at home. We started about two months ago. And to be honest with you, Lucas is the first person that brings us this uh, big business. And I'm very happy. And then this is a new product. We've never done it before. He just bought us a sample and said, give it a try. And once you work, I'll give you 50 pieces. So he stand by it towards, once we did a sample, it get good. And then he bought that 50. And to be honest with you, it's really good. It gave us business. And then we're looking forward to have more business. Adama is the Gambian manager of Continent Clothing, who is responsible for managing the process from buying the products, taking them to the tailors, and supervising the process. He is also sometimes responsible for exporting the materials out of the country. What are the things you have learned since you started in Continent Clothing? When I start content clothing, I, I come to learn because first time, you know, I don't know anything about fabric. When it takes me like two years, wow. then I start to understand the fabric and I start, you know, the fabric I want. Uh, starting from the content clothing up to now, I have, I have my own car there, so which I take, you know, it make my work very easy to go up and down. Yeah, I know I'm a businessman now. You know, I, anyway, I, I learn a lot of things, you know, about Continent Clothing. Honestly, Omar is one of Continent Clothing's tailor who has been with them for about eight years now. He owns his own tailoring shop in Sukota, where he has three employees working for him. One of Omar's employee has now opened his own tailoring shop just opposite him. Omar's been a tailor with us for, I think, about eight years now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and he makes all of our amazing massive coats, our shirts, our puffer jackets, our parkas, all of the really hard stuff, that's Omar's job. We attended one of their shoots with Beats Photography. Beats Photography is a Gambian photographer who is doing an amazing job in the industry. He captures the life of Gambians in his photograph. Lucas also did some demonstration with the clothes and told us a bit about each piece. This one here is one of our most complicated pieces. It's an African military coat made out of, I think it's 34 different African prints sewn back together. So not only is this the most colorful piece we have, this is also the most environmentally friendly piece we have because it means we recycle all of our offcuts. This one here, we have a trench coat. So the funny thing about this one is actually, this one has not only got a story behind it between, but from who the tailor made it and where it's from. This fabric was one of the first ever fabrics that I owned a pair of trousers with six years ago. And I called it the wow fabric, because every time you go anywhere, people think, wow. And still to this day on my website, this fabric is called the wow jacket. 
So th this one's one of our newest designs. It's just an oversized hoodie, but people absolutely love it. It's just comfy, it's colorful, and it just highlights the print in such a beautiful way. This print is actually a mud cloth print. It's just a copy, but the original mud cloth was one of the first ever fabrics known to mankind. So it originated in Mali, and it used to be made out of the mud, the earth. Obviously now it's just a print, now it's just just a print, but it's still a beautiful design nonetheless. So the piece we have here is the trench is the trench coat, like the ones you just saw. But what's special about this one is this ridiculously optical illusion-like fabric. This orange fabric people have absolutely gone crazy for. And the one that I'm wearing is actually a bomber jacket. And the bomber jackets is actually probably the product that really took continent globing to the next level. So I'm pretty sure we were the first people in the UK to do like African style bomber jacket. And people just went mental for them. We went to Glastonbury, which is a festival in the UK. And I took, uh, I think it was 270 to Glastonbury 2015. And by the second day they were gone. And then I knew that I knew that I needed to make a hell of a lot of bomber jackets. And that I think that's the product that really made Continent Climbing what it is today. After the products are made in the Gambia, they are then taken to the airport where it is packaged and sent out of the country. It is then taken to London and distributed in every part of the world.